Good evening and welcome to CUTV News Center for the week of April 21st, 2016. I'm Zach Prosba. And I'm Ryan Kaufman. The presidential primaries and general election for district seats of Pennsylvania will not take place until next week, but the California University of Pennsylvania student government election results have just been announced and it is my honor to present to you your 2016-17 SGA Board of Directors. Let me see here on your screen, President Shana Hilsey, Vice President Rachel Simmons, Financial Secretary Jordan Lockard, Corresponding Secretary Jonathan Hershey, and Recording Secretary Mary Boyle. Now also, following the SGA results were also the SEA Board of Director honorees, and they are as follows. Mary Boyle, Shana Hilsey, Rachel Simmons, Jonathan Hershey, Justin DePerna, Maura O'Brien, and Leah Sater. Congratulations to all honorees. Earlier this week, New Yorkers went to the polls in droves to cast their vote for their favorite presidential candidate. For the Democrats and Republicans, it was a landslide victory for Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Hillary beat Bernie Sanders 57% to 42% with a total of 1.8 million votes cast. Donald Trump came in first with 60% of the vote, John Kasich came in second with 25%, and Ted Cruz came in last with 14% of the vote. A total of 874,000 votes were cast in this election. This, is now, this now creates an interesting issue with candidates for both parties because the, New Yorker, because the New York win only padded Clinton and Trump's lead. Let's look now at the Democratic delegate count. Clinton is leading 1,428 to Bernie's 1,151. This does not include the superdelegates. I will go over this issue in a few moments. The Republican frontrunner, Donald Trump, has 845 delegates, Ted Cruz has 559, and John Kasich has 148. The Republicans need, to, need 1,237 to clinch the victory. As mentioned at the top of the broadcast, the Pennsylvania primary is coming up next week. As of right now, Thursday, April 21st, the projected winners for each party would be Hillary Clinton by a slim 13-point margin, according to Politico.com. NBC is reporting that even if Ted Cruz comes in third place for the Republicans like he did in New York, he will win half of the Pennsylvania delegates. Pennsylvania has an unbound delegate system, meaning only 17 of the 71 delegates in the state are bound to the winner automatically. As mentioned, Tuesday is the primary for the state of Pennsylvania. CUTV will be airing live coverage of the results and commentary from members of the Cal U Republicans and Cal U Democratic Clubs. Tune in Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. for live updates, discussion, and results of the uh, presidential primary, as well as local election updates as available. Myself and Zach Prosba will be hosting this event. I have been getting a lot of questions about what happens after the primaries are over. Do the candidates with the most delegates automatically go to the national vote in November? Do we vote on the top two candidates from each party? Well, the simple answer here is no to both. Once the primaries are over on June 7th, we will en encounter one of two possibilities. The first, with uh, the party frontrunner with the required amount of delegates, will be considered the party nominee to move on to the November national election. For the Republicans, the frontrunner will need to hit or surpass 1,237 delegates. The Democrats need to also hit or surpass 2,383 delegates to receive the nomination. The second possibility is that the parties will go to a contested convention uh, because, that, because the required amount of delegates were not received. The Republican convention will take place in Cleveland, Ohio from July 18th and will end on the 21st. What will happen is the delegates from each state will cast a roll call style vote in front of the entire convention and live on TV. If by the end of the first roll call vote no candidate receives the 1,237 vote requirement, they will re-vote the next day until the number is hit and a candidate can emerge. The last time a candidate didn't emerge from a convention on the first vote was in 1948. All other votes confirmed a candidate on the first try. For the Democrats, it is the exact same rule, except we introduce superdelegates into this convention. Superdelegates are handpicked by the party and do not have to vote the same as the convention, uh, uh, same as their state, rather. But by law, 18 states do require that they vote the same as their state. These special delegates can change their vote at any time before the roll call vote happens. If the first ballot does not confirm a candidate on the first try, a second vote will take place and so on until a candidate can claim victory. The Democratic Convention will be held in Philadelphia on July 25th and will end on the, eight, on the 28th. After years of rallying for a new face in the U.S. currency, the first woman will graze the green piece of paper tucked in your wallet. 
Harriet Tubman, the innovator behind the Underground Railroad, will be the face of the new $20 bill starting in 2020, replacing Andrew Jackson. Alexander Hamilton will remain on the $10 bill, but famous women through history, such as Sojourner Truth, Susan B. Anthony, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton, will also graze the backs of $10 and $5 bills. Also, the $5 bill will have changes made to the Lincoln Memorial that is on the back. Famous acts throughout history, such as the MLK speech at the Lincoln Memorial, will now grace the back instead of just the memorial itself. To find out the latest news on campus and elsewhere, make sure you pick up a copy of the Cal Times when it is released every Friday around campus. Also, the Cal Times is now available on select Mid-Mon Valley transit buses, so look for those if you happen to catch a ride through the Mon Valley. And Ryan, you teased there the primary show a little bit earlier in the broadcast and a nice minute long kind of explanation <laughs> into how everything works. And if you want even more details about how that works, make sure you tune in next Tuesday night at 8.30. It'll be Tuesday the 26th. Sixth. Uh, like Ryan said, it'll be myself and him, and this is your brainchild. You wanted to do it. Why did you want to do this show uh, for the Pennsylvania primaries, at well, least? For myself, it's going to be great practice to be able to um, do news on a national level, but also um, live political results, because that's mm -hmm. sort of what I want to go into after we leave mm -hmm. college here, um, uh, as well as probably back behind the scenes directing or producing. But for myself, I absolutely love politics. Like I yeah. tell these guys all the time. It's my version of March Madness this time of year. So this is absolutely like nonstop fun for me for this. So that's sort of why I chose to create the show and run with it. Yeah. We're going to have to start calling you Wolf Blitzer at some oh point. Gosh. You're becoming our <laughs> political expert. So I'll be there along with you. I may not know as much as you, but I'll try and learn as much as I can before the day. And you mentioned we're going to have the college Republicans and the college Democrats here. They're going to help us along as we get the results and as we keep getting closer to Hopefully, making it an easy process of getting a nominee right. the way you laid it out doesn't seem like it's going to be that way, though. No, we're definitely going to have a contested convention on both sides. Yeah. Um, there's just too much math with that. Yeah, so hopefully it all works itself <laughs> yeah. out, though. So. And coming up after the break, Alex McAvoy has your weather forecast. Stay tuned. With Cal U's six on-campus residence halls and Vulcan Village's garden-style apartment complex, University Housing offers the very best value in service, convenience, privacy, and security. On-campus students will have easy access to classrooms, the newly renovated Natalie Student Center, and a variety of activities across campus. University housing properties includes all utilities. Other common amenities to all properties are fully furnished rooms, high-def cable TV, high-speed Wi-Fi access, and live-in professional staff. Balkan Village also includes a full kitchen and laundry room. The property has a 24-7 fitness center, convenient shuttle service, and an outdoor seasonal saltwater pool. Model rooms and tours are available. Stop in the University Housing Office or contact us by phone or email to learn more. For almost 30 years, CUTV has been the campus and community home for local news, sports, and entertainment. Broadcast in 100,000 homes in southwestern Pennsylvania, CUTV provides complete coverage of Vulcan sports as well as high school football coverage. Broadcast weekly live, CUTV News Center provides coverage of local and campus events, weekend weather, sports highlights, and feature stories. For more information on CUTV, check us out on the web, friend us on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter. Hello Cal U, I'm student meteorologist Alex McAvoy here in the Cal U Weather Lab and I'll be giving a forecast for today and what we can expect to see this week and this weekend. So looking at some current temperatures, we see about 72 degrees in Pittsburgh, 79 degrees down in Miami there. Um, we're going to look at some forecasted highs for today. Looks like it's going to be around 80 degrees in our area and also down 80 degrees down in Miami and around 80 in San Diego actually. So I'm going to look at some radar right now and we'll be seeing some showers moving into our region for today pretty soon actually. So here's, here's, there's the clouds and also the rain that we're seeing moving into our region. We see some heavy thunderstorms down near Houston, Texas where they have all that flooding right now. So that's not gonna help them at all. So we're gonna look at the future radar. We'll zoom into our region, turn on the future radar here, give this a second to load. But like I said, we'll be seeing these showers pop up probably around five o'clock or so. See some initial showers, maybe around two o'clock. 
but the bulk of the shower should be around five, maybe into later evening. So we'll go on to some media now. I'll show what we can expect to see today and also into this weekend. So like I said, there's those showers and thunderstorms moving their way up to the east coast here and around the mid-Atlantic region. Um, and then in the Midwest, we see some cooler air coming down, which will actually affect our region tomorrow and Saturday. We'll see some cooler air, but this warm air will transgress its way over to our region for Sunday. And then Friday, we're, like I said, we're seeing these chillier temperatures moving their way into our region. And this warmth is now starting to move further over towards us for Sunday. And then again, here's Thursday night into Friday. We're going to be seeing these thunderstorms coming in possibly tonight after all this warm air moves out of the, our region. And this colder air, and you see the jet stream here, this colder air dipping down will create some thunderstorms and bring us some rain Thursday night into Friday. So this weekend, we're seeing a, really a straight flow of the jet stream here from east to west, bringing in some warmer air, warmer air and keeping the whole region, like two thirds of the United States, really warm. And we're gonna be seeing some severe thunderstorms out in Kansas and Nebraska from this warm air and cold air coming down behind it, bringing in some severe weather to them. So again, looking for about Saturday into Sunday, we see this Pacific air that's moved its way all the way across the United States up into our region, we're going to be seeing high 60s and then low 70s Saturday and also in Sunday. So we're going to go on the seven-day forecast here. Like I said, high of around 80 today with some showers, thunderstorms moving their way in Friday morning most likely. Saturday, it's going to be clear out, but it's going to be a little bit colder, high of 63 it looks like. Sunday, it's going to start warming up. Moving in the next week, it's also going to start warming up. So we see about 78 Monday, which is a very high temperature. 71 Tuesday with possibly some showers and cooling off a little bit after those showers on Wednesday with a high of 69 degrees. I'm student meteorologist Alex McAvoy. Now back to Ryan and Zach at the desk. And so Ryan, Alex is not here to banter with us today, so we're going to bring you back to your old roots as a <laughs> student meteorologist. Uh, looks like it's going to warm up a little bit. It's still cool at night, uh, but I'm just glad that it's warming up in the afternoon. I remember Dylan, who was here last week, who said, hopefully you're our saving grace and keep the warm here, and it looks like he's done his job. Yeah. Um, the only unfortunate part about all the forecasts is that it's going to stay clear at night, basically. And that's why it's going to cool off at night. Yeah. That's what makes those long walks home not fun for me. <laughs> <laughs> Need to invest in bringing your car to Cal next year. Maybe they'll... Uh, once I get a car. Oh, well, I thought you had a car. Whatever. No. Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have the liberty of driving home every night, and it looks like there's some rain coming up, so make sure you pack your umbrella as well yeah. when you're here on campus. You only got a week left, but you don't want to spend that week with clothes lining out <laughs> trying to get them dry. So, all right, that'll do it for the weather banner. When we come back after the break, Mike Mays takes us on our trip around the entertainment world, and I actually said that wrong. It's going to be Stephen Ruffing. Stephen Ruffing will take us on a trip around the entertainment world. Stay tuned. With Cal U's six on-campus residence halls and Vulcan Village's garden-style apartment complex, University Housing offers the very best value in service, convenience, privacy, and security. On-campus students will have easy access to classrooms, the newly renovated Natalie Student Center, and a variety of activities across campus. University Housing Properties includes all utilities, other common amenities to all properties are fully furnished rooms, high-def cable TV, high-speed Wi-Fi access, and live-in professional staff. Walken Village also includes a full kitchen and laundry room. The property has a 24-7 fitness center, convenient shuttle service, and an outdoor seasonal saltwater pool. Model rooms and tours are available. Stop in the University Housing Office or contact us by phone or email to learn more. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Since 1937, the Student Association Incorporated, known as SAI, has served the Cal U student body by providing activities, 
programs, and services. Every enrolled student has the ability to take part in over 125 different clubs and organizations. Managing participation in every SAI activity is easy with OrgSync, a powerful tool for staying connected. Located one mile from campus, the SAI farm has 94 acres of meeting and recreational space. SAI, it's your student association. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm not Mike Mays, I'm Stephen Ruffing with your entertainment report. Each week of the year, video, videos go viral and crazy new inventions are put on the market. Our own Mike Mays shows us what he found while digging on the internet this week. Hi, my name is Mike Mays. My first consider me an expert on finding weird and bizarre stories online. I have gathered some clips for you today, so check out what I found. An ambulance is called to an elderly man's home after he passes out. While one EMT treats the man, the other EMT mows his lawn. Five Guys Burglar cooks burgers and pours himself a drink after breaking into a Five Guys restaurant. An English town builds a shrine for a cookie that has been dropped on the ground. Each day, people stop by to pay their respects. That's for this week on What Mike Found. Come back in two weeks for more bizarre news on CUTV News Center. Listen up, Cal U students. Hypnotist Eric Mina makes his return to the university on Wednesday, May 27th for another free show for the students starting at 7 p.m. in the Performance Center. Follow Cal U Activities on Twitter for more information. And as we all know, Suicide Squad is one of the most anticipated movies of 2016. The movie is based around a group of villains led by the infamous Joker. But how do you match the talent of former Joker Heath Ledger? Spend time in an actual psychiatric hospital with actual patients. That is exactly what actor Jared Leto did to prepare, to prepare for the role. Leto went to see professional psychiatrists and institutionalized patients to see what they go through and to get a better understanding of the Joker. For Star Wars fans, Han Solo is one of the most iconic characters in the original trilogy and the newest film, The Force Awakens. Solo is so iconic, Disney is in the process of making his own spin-off from his younger days. Harrison Ford, known for his role as Solo, sadly doesn't fit the young characteristic. Disney claims they have a short list of actors to play the young smuggler. This list includes Alden Ironreck, Jack Reiner, and Taron Egerton, all up and coming actors. Disney is taking the film world by storm with turning their animated movies into live action. The most recent was Jungle Book that premiered this past weekend. The movie ended its premiere with a whopping $103 million weekend. With a 95% rating from Rotten Tomato, The Jungle Book takes the number two spot for highest grossing live action Disney movies behind Alice in Wonderland. You're traveling through another dimension, a dimension not only out of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are that of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. That's right, a Twilight Zone reboot is in the near future. Although the reboot is vague, writer Ken Levine says it will have a twist and leave audience coming back with a different viewing experience. And to round out this entertainment for this week, we have Star Wars The Force Awakens in the Vulcan Theater. Thirty years after the fall of the Galactic Empire, rogue stormtrooper Finn and tough scavenger Rey find a strange map and team up with Han Solo to take down the galaxy's new threat, Kylo Ren, and search for the whereabouts of Jedi Knight, Luke Skywalker. Show times are 5, 8, and 11 p.m. daily. And, uh, Zach, Ryan, uh, earlier before we got set up for news, a tragedy happened in the entertainment world. We had a uh, famous singer-songwriter, Prince, uh, pass away, and just something, how they say, it always comes in three. Yesterday we lost uh, former WWE diva, China, one of the more iconic ones in, uh, mm -hmm. in the WWE. But just losing Prince, it really hits home to a lot of people. Yeah, I know. I enjoy the music of Prince. Uh, his Super Bowl halftime show was iconic. 
I ne at the time, I didn't like that he kind of did covers of other people's songs. Mm -hmm. But looking back on it now, watching him perform Purple Rain in yep. the rain was wonderful. Mm -hmm. And we've seen pictures today in Minneapolis where he's from. The Minnesota Twins have colored all their banners around their park in purple. Yep. One of the big bridges in Minneapolis is drowned in purple light right now. They are honoring the man the way he deserves. He's an iconic performer, kind of in the light of Michael Jackson. You look, right. Michael Jackson died at uh, age 50. Prince, 57. We lost David Bowie earlier this year. The music world has taken big hits this year in the forms of pop music from around the 80s. Uh, I was just doing a quick research, and um, uh, Ryan Seacrest's page, at AT Top 40, they are posting all these tweet, uh, tweets from, uh, for instance, Katy Perry, Demi Lovato, Big Sean, Samuel L. Jackson, celebrities from around the world, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, all these people are tweeting about this right now and how just such big inspiration, such sad news, and people just can't believe it right now. Right, I mean, we really lost a legend today, and it's very, very sad news. Yeah, it's one, he's kind of, like I said, Michael Jackson before, you know who he is, you also know his songs, though. Mm -hmm. uh, Raspberry Beret, Party Like It's 1999, and Purple Rain. Right. Probably the three most iconic in my mind, and I'm probably going to have to go listen to a few <laughs> of those tonight and think about them one more time. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thanks, Steve, for that. Uh, when we return, Anthony D'Arcino has your sports report. Stay tuned. Todd's a great guy. I mean, look at him. What a sweetheart. Attaboy. Wait, Todd, what are you doing? How totally selfish and untod like of you. Come on, Todd. Come on, man. Save preset one for Cal U's best music. More music in the car. More music in the door. More music everywhere. This is, this is 91.9 WCAL Power 92. The home of the Vulcan Nation. Playing Cal U's best music. 91.9 WCAL. WCAL Power 92. Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Anthony D'Agostino with your sports report. The California University baseball team played against IUP on Saturday the 16th. In the first game, California won 7-5. Batting well for the team was Mick Fennell. He went 2-3 for three from the plate with two runs, one walk. And uh, G.J. Senchak started for the Vulcans in pitching. He gave up seven hits and four runs, and all of those runs were earned runs. He also struck out five batters. He ended up pitching four innings. Levi Krause came in and got the save, pitching three innings, giving up four hits, one earned run, and one strikeout. In the second game of the doubleheader, California got demolished 21-6. And batting well for the team was Bobby Thompson. He went two for three from the plate. He had two, RBI, uh, two runs and had one RBI. Pitcher Joe Yorgel started the game. He struggled, allowing seven runs on eight hits, and all of the seven runs being earned runs in .2 innings. The bullpen came in and also struggled. They collectively allowed 17 hits and 12 earned runs. The Cal U softball team took on Slippery Rock on Sunday the 17th as they split the series. In the first game, they lost 1-0 and had snapped their 27-game win streak. Batting well for the softball team was pitcher Abby Sachs. She went 1-for-1 one one from the plate, and pitcher Alex Sagel just gave up one run. However, that one run came off of a home run. In the second game, California came back with a vengeance, winning 8 to nothing, powering the Vulcans with Jacqueline Fowler. She went one for one from the plate with two runs. She also walked once. She also had two RBIs. She also had two RBIs. Pitcher Taylor Robley got the win, pitching 3.1 innings. She gave up no hits on 11 batters. She walked one batter and struck out one batter. The latest national rankings have California at ninth. And the regional rankings have California still slotted at fifth for the California softball team. The newly named coach of the Vulcans football team, Gary Dunn, sat down with our reporter, Danny Beck, to discuss the upcoming spring game, which will take place on April 23rd. 
increasing community involvement and also getting students to come to games, Gary Dunn has big plans for the Vulcan football team this season. We're doing as, as much outreach right now as we can to get folks involved with our program uh, through community service with our guys. I know I've taken 20 or 25 guys today to do some community service with the Rotary Club here in town. Uh, we've done a number of events so far and, and we just want people to join us and have a good time. When asked about the upcoming spring game, here's what he had to say. More of a controlled practice than a scrimmage. Uh, we're going to do a lot of different situations that I want to put the guys in one last time this spring. You know, we'll do some red zone stuff, we'll do some open field stuff, maybe a two minute drill. Uh, trying to hit every specific area that we need to get work on before before the season and get one last evaluation on our guys before they're they're done for the the semester so uh, it won't be a true game type atmosphere but it'll be a lot of different situations that i'm going to put the guys in as for expectations for the 2016 season you know that we compete every game um, i think the biggest thing that, that we're trying to instill in our guys and and our guys are great competitors no matter what we do from what we've done since i've been here whether it's tug of war whether it's shooting basketball whether it's running sprints. Our guys love to compete. Um, I've almost had to pull them back a little bit. They just love to compete. And that's the thing, you know, we're going we're gonna to go in, we're going to be fundamentally sound, but we're going to compete. We're going to play hard. We're going to play disciplined. And then, you know, we'll see where we stand at the end of that. That's awesome. And on Saturdays in the fall, pack Adamson Stadium for us. For CUTV News Center, I'm Danny Beck. The NHL playoffs are in full swing now, and starting in the Western Conference, the Dallas Stars lead the Minnesota Wild three games to one. The Blues lead the Blackhawks three games to one, and the Predators lead the Ducks two games to one. The Sharks, they lead the Kings two games to one. Now switching over to the Eastern Conference, the Islanders-Panthers series is all tied up two games to two. The Lightning lead the Red Wings three games to one, and the Capitals lead the Flyers as well three games to one. The Penguins lead the Rangers two games to one as well. Vintage baseball is coming to the Mon Valley. The teams participating in the sport will be playing under, the, under 19th century rules. Before each game, a short presentation will be given about the history of the teams in the local area, and that will take place in Denora. After a long period of waiting, the Whitbeal announced the championship games for single A and double A football. They will be held at Joe Walton Stadium on the campus of Robert Morris University. And now it's time for the Vulcan Hammer Award. For this week's Vulcan Hammer Award, I've selected Vulcan softball athlete Taylor Robley. Robley went two for two from the plate, scoring two runs, one of them being a home run. She also had two RBIs. That was in the game on Saturday against Mercyhurst. And being a freshman, Robley continues to light it up on the field. She also was a solid pitcher. In the last game against Slippery Rock, Robley pitched 3.1 innings and gave up no hits and only one walk. And guys, being that it is an even-numbered year, that can only mean one thing. The Olympics are back here uh, on NBC, and that will the start this summer in, in August. And just now, the torch was lit in Greece. So pretty awesome to see the, uh, the torch being lit there in Greece. Yeah, it's always fun to see. Um, it started in Athens, and it's going to make its way to Rio um, in Brazil in the Olympics. You said they start, I believe it's August the 5th. It's yeah. a Thursday. Um, I think the enjoyable thing about this is they're not too far ahead of our time zone, so actually be able to get to watch a lot of the live events because I enjoyed the Summer Olympics a lot. I know you were asking me earlier how they uh, do the torch like overseas and whatnot yeah. when they cross can't over. can't run over water. No, you can't. <laughs> what they do really quick, they put it inside of like a torch or whatever, put it on a, to, if they go on a plane, they put it out on the torch, they sit there with it, and then they can relight it when they get back off. It's actually gone underwater too. I, I don't know how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Fire underwater doesn't seem to work. Olympics are always my favorite time of the year, uh, either winter or summer. Um, and I just, I always enjoy watching the Olympics whenever I get the chance. Great athletes and a great thing for the world, uh, the Olympics. Yeah, bring everybody together and see the best athletes in the world in their respective sports. So, thanks, Anthony. That will do it for this week's edition of News Center. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel at CUTV News Center. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend.